As I mentioned at the outset of this service, this Sunday is Baptism of Christ Sunday. And baptisms are a big deal in our faith tradition. No matter if the one being baptized is an infant whose family has chosen to affirm their commitment to raising their child in the Christian faith, no matter if the one being baptized is a young person who has come to the decision that they want to publicly claim their place in the church. No matter if the one being baptized is an adult who has decided to affirm or reaffirm their relationship with God through Christ. Baptisms are a big deal in our faith tradition. No matter if the manner of baptism is sprinkling, where the symbolic use of water reflects the three persons of the Trinity and the creating, sustaining, and redeeming acts of God. No matter if the manner of baptism is pouring, where the water running like the waters of a river flows across the forehead, cleansing, washing away all that might impede the love of God. No matter if the manner of baptism is full immersion, when one is fully immersed in the waters of the sacrament, just as they are immersed in the powerful grace of God. Once more, let me say that baptisms are a big deal in our faith tradition. And on this particular Sunday, when we remember the baptism of Christ through the telling of the story from the Gospels, and we recall the call Jesus made that all should be baptized as he was baptized, we take a moment to consider why that is true. Why baptisms are such a big deal. For my friends, they represent a key moment, a turning point, a, a hinge in our faith journey. And believe it or not, not only for the one being baptized. Just about one year ago, give or take a week, members of Manhattan Beach Community Church gathered at Camp Wasawagon up in the San Bernardino Mountains for Family Camp 2020. All of the life-altering changes that would come with the COVID pandemic were not yet upon us. And we had gathered for a weekend of fun and meaning and especially exciting for me, 24-hour-a-day Diet Coke on tap. We gathered blissfully ignorant of what lay ahead in that year. There was also some snow, a lovely campfire, a whole bunch of Girl Scouts, and bikes to take along the trails. In fact, one of the young ones who was with us that weekend learned how to ride a bike that weekend. One other interesting aspect of this particular location was a stream that ran through the camp. It was a place to play, explore, to get a little bit wet, and as it turned out, a place for a faith-filled moment, a turning point, a hinge on someone's faith journey. Heading into the camp, one of the young people from our congregation had made known that she wished to be baptized while we were at family camp. And when we arrived at camp, we made the choice to perform the baptism in the stream. After all, if you have a stream, why not put it to good use? So on the final morning of camp, as the old song suggests, our congregation all gathered at the river, or stream, as in this case. And it was my great honor to walk out into the water with our younger, wonderful young person and perform her baptism, surrounded by members of her family and members of her church family. The story we heard this morning from Mark's gospel describes a similar scene as people gathered at the river to be baptized and to witness others being baptized. In this case, it was John who was having the great honor of sharing that moment with the one being baptized and with God. And for each, this relatively simple act was a moment that served as a turning point, a hinge on their faith journey. But perhaps for more than just them. 
For the reason we read this story, despite the deep significance of each baptism performed by John that day, is that among those being baptized was the man Jesus. Yes, just a couple weeks removed from our celebration of his birth, we fast forward perhaps 30 years or so to the time of his baptism. For as I have said, this was a moment, a turning point, a hinge on Jesus' faith journey as well. Following this moment and a time in the wilderness, he will embark on his world-changing ministry. I've also said that this was a moment not only for Jesus, but for the others gathered at the river that day. Depending on the version of the story you read, the details vary a little bit. In some, it is clear that John knew that Jesus was somehow different as he approached. But in Mark's version, the one we heard this morning, while John does speak, does speak of one who is to come, there is nothing that suggests that John knew that Jesus was that one upon his approach. It would be very easy for this to be a simple, private moment for Jesus. He could have remained quite anonymous. And yet, Mark tells us that just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Being present for such a moment in such a divine proclamation, I must imagine that all gathered at the river that day were changed by the experience. For these people were not simply bystanders. They were witnesses. And that is a very important distinction to be sure. For a bystander is passively present while a witness becomes a part of the ongoing story. In fact, they were the very first of what would become a very long list of witnesses to the incredible things that God would do in and through the life of Jesus Christ. They could tell all their friends one day that they were there at the very beginning. No, not like the shepherds in Luke's gospel, but perhaps just as significantly, they were there when God affirmed who Jesus was. God's own, God's beloved. And they were witnesses to the moment when God ushered in a whole new age for humanity. Baptisms, as you may have heard, are a big deal in our faith tradition. Dating back to this one, for they represent a key moment, a turning point, a hinge in our faith journey, and believe it or not, not only for those who are baptized. The people gathered at the river the day that Jesus was baptized by John witnessed this moment and shared in this moment as each, hearing the words of God, claiming Jesus as God's own, was offered an opportunity to reaffirm in a new and deeper way their own faith. Perhaps they had been previously baptized, or perhaps they were waiting to be baptized that day, or perhaps they had heard the stories of this strange John the Baptizer, and they were just there to watch. Yet in the moment that the heavens opened, and God spoke of Jesus as beloved, all of those present experienced the power and presence of God in their midst. And such an experience brings with it an invitation to respond, to take very seriously what it means to be baptized, to be claimed by God as beloved. It was very much the same at the stream that runs through Wasawagen a year ago. Now, I would love to tell you that as I completed the baptism, the heavens were torn apart and the spirit descended like a dove and the divine voice boomed. But I don't recall it happening that way. Others may have a different experience. But present in that moment, each one gathered at that stream like those gathered at the River Jordan were witnesses, not bystanders, as we experience the power and presence of God in our midst. And each one gathered at that stream, like those gathered at the River Jordan, received the same invitation to respond. 
For my friends, that is the case for all of us when we come together as a gathered community for a baptism. We are witnesses to the incredible grace of God at work in the moment and in the life of the one being baptized and in the lives of the family and friends with whom they stand. We are invited in that moment not just to commit our support for them on their faith journey, but to recommit ourselves to our own faith journey, to living according to the teachings of Jesus and to seek to embody the love of God in our words and in our actions. It's one of those thin moments when God's present is that much more evident, more perceivable to all of us. As God affirms God's love for the one being baptized, claims them as beloved, and by extension, we too are claimed once more. So I want to thank Stella, and I want to thank each person who has chosen to be baptized in our midst, every parent who has chosen to have their child baptized in our community, for each such moment is an incredible gift for all who are blessed to be witnesses. And today, after an incredibly tumultuous year filled with personal and communal challenges, following a season that includes a day to give thanks and a day to celebrate the most precious gift of God and following the horrific events of this past week when violence and hate focused around selfishness and disorder once again made its way into our national view. As we remember the baptism of Christ, we are once again invited to respond. We are invited to offer our thanks to God for reminding us once again of the meaning in this story of baptism. A story that stands in contrast to the hate and affirms instead God's boundless love and limitless grace. And we are invited, invited to reaffirm our commitment to embody those ideals in our lives, individually and collectively. I'd like to invite each of us, wherever we may be, right now or after the service is concluded, to fill a cup or bowl with some water. Then take a moment to sit with it, to consider how that water is connected with the water in the river in which Jesus was baptized connected to the water in the stream in which Stella was baptized, connected with the water in our baptismal here in the sanctuary. Take a moment to remember that that water, a gift of God, is blessed. Then place your fingers in the water. Touch them to your forehead. And remember the loving act of your own baptism. Then say a little prayer, out loud or silently, offering thanks to God and reaffirming your commitment to your faith and to living more fully into your relationship with God this and every day. For baptism, however it happens, and no matter how it is reaffirmed, is a big deal in our faith journey. May we be witnesses, not bystanders, to the power and presence of God, and may we embrace this moment as a turning point, a hinge on our own faith journey. Amen.